Yeah. Are we running? Yeah. The thing is, Chris, I think, you know, irrespective of a wheel size, I think for me, what does it for the Stump Jump Revo is actually fits me. I mean, you know, you compare, if you've got road bikes, you've got maybe 10 different sizes in, in each bike, but, you know, the chances on a mountain bike are, are, are less because there's maybe small, medium, or large. So, but on this Stump Jumper, what does it is like it's got a good long wheelbase. It's got quite a long down tube on it, and you know I fine-tuned it with like a 35 mil stem, you know, a wide bar, and I think it's just the bike that it just does it for me really. And I don't think I I can't find a 26-inch bike that that fits me, to, you know, quite like it. Maybe it's maybe it's an enduro. No, I think you're I think you're absolutely right, Steve. You, the bike manufacturers have done very few different things to geometry over the last 15 years the bikes have been getting slacker lower and longer bit by bit over years they might they might adjust it by a quarter of a degree or a, a millimeter here and there but they're all the same pretty much yeah and they're not going enough but they've had to stick bigger wheels in these things so now all of a sudden they're ended up by default with a a really low bottom bracket in relation to the axles and they've had to make big bikes because they've got big wheels so all of a sudden they've made a bike that fits big people so people are saying yes 29ers are great for big people yeah because they need to make bigger 26 inch wheel bikes for big people <laughs> not because 29ers are jack's magic beans yeah. for his beanstalk it's just that they're bigger so, so this is this is Chris's Mondrake uh, Foxy XR. Now, it's not. Don't confuse it with the Foxy RR. Exactly. And this bike is quite different. And so, you reckon this is close to my stump jumper? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> if, if, if you look at the, if you look at the reach, the measurement that you can't change with it, any offsets it's, it's here or any offsets here. This is what's fixed from the manufacturer. You got a 28 and a half inch down tube. Chris, it's 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 this measurement, isn't it? <laughs> It's not really. It's not. It's not. It's the one that can't change, and that. So we've got an even an, an inch. So what we're looking, at, we've got like we've got 20, 28 on this one. Twenty-eight inch down tube on your bike. Twenty-nine inch on mine. Now there can't be many bikes within even two inches of that. Now this is a size large, and that is an incredibly long down tube. And I mean, not even on, not even on kind of. The kind of World Cup bikes of Minar, PT, who ride extra large, will they be as long as this? Will they? Nope. Does it work? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, doesn't n there won't be anything near it because uh, you know that this was designed to run with a 10 mil stem. So in effect, they lengthened the top tube and down tube by the 60 millimeters that they robbed off the stem. I've actually gone back to a 30 because I've tipped the head angle even further with a, an adjuster cup to get myself even more wheelbase, even slacker head angle and now the relationship between the handlebars and that needs to change. And that's the, that is the crucial thing isn't it? Is the relationship between between this and your front axle is getting getting the weight in the right place yes. and I think a lot of people might get confused and think because there's a ridiculous long wheelbase in this bike isn't it? What is yeah. it? 40 nine and a half inches yeah. but you can still get your weight absolutely down through that axle can't you well it's in fact it's easier to load the front wheel because instead of having to squat backwards when i when i'm trying to load the bike or ride downhill instead of having to squat backwards and lift the weight off the back wheel and desperately trying to push the handlebars down with extended arms i can now lean forward all the way into the turn however steep it is because the front wheel's far enough away the the handlebar to axle relationship is similar to something like a 62 degree head angle bike which you won't find on many production downhill bikes never mind trail bikes and yet i'm on a 64 uh, which is a uh, you know reasonable. Yeah. reasonable. We don't need to get conf carried away with the kind of head angle so much on a bike like this too. I mean, it's probably less important, isn't it? Yeah, it's uh, it's it's about that relationship, axle handlebar, and the faster you go, the slacker your head angle needs to be. The slower you go, the more comfortable you are with a steeper head angle. That essentially you know it's the same same in any kind of bicycle that the faster you go the more you're going to need to lean it over the more you need to lean it over the slacker the head angle needs yeah. to be to make it turn now quite a funny thing that uh, chris said to me earlier was okay but 
you need to be more sensitive with your forks and you gave me a bollock and yes this bike is kind of unmaintained for six months <laughs> but I can I can go that much quicker over flat routes because I got the bigger wheels. So the you know it is important to have the sense that you know the maintenance in your fork. The, I mean sen the, the sensitivity. The, the Steve can get away with having a fork that's not very sensitive here because he's gone to the big wheel, and he, it rolls over the bumps better. That's physics. That's fine. It's you know it's really not very difficult to understand. So his forks don't need to do as much work because the wheel is bigger. That's fine. If you were going to try and get over the same bump at the same speed on this, then that smaller wheel needs to deflect further, which means the fork needs to be more sensitive, which means you need to spend some time on it. Yeah. Which you have done. I mean, you said oh, you... It doesn't take an awful lot of time, yeah. you know, in order to make the fork um, as sensitive as possible. It's just a case of maintenance, yeah. you know, in the same way that you wouldn't expect you, you maybe wouldn't expect the same kind of sensitivity from a transit van as you might from, say, a Subaru um, WRX around the track, you know, you, but you've got to put the time in. Okay, you won't get a 40,000 mile service interval. Okay, so this, I guess, maybe gets a bit messy. So, with, are we going to go down the time route? I mean, I think this bike is going to be faster than that bike. Does it, I, does, does it matter to you? I think, Steve... You will be faster on your bike, on your trails, but I'm, ha I'm happy that I am faster on my bike, on my trails. Yeah. I couldn't ride your bike as fast as you do on your trails, and I'm pretty sure vice versa, it wouldn't happen okay. either. Okay, so the type of trails we ride are kind of pretty much what we say is around Monmouth Billy, kind of mud and shit. I don't want to use the loam. I think loam is overused. Uh, whereas Chris is more, I don't know, more, more stone and rock. And I, I, I like, high speed? I like fast trails, I have to say. I like fast trails rather than slow trails. Um, I, I love to ride slow trails, but I'm not very good at it. Yeah. I like to ride fast trails. Um, I mean, the stability on this bike must be... I mean, it can't be another... I mean, I know it's 160, 140, but the, there's nothing anywhere near, is there, really? I mean, our, I think, going back to the 26-inch wheel bike, is that manufacturers probably... I mean, we're both six foot, aren't we? Yeah. I mean, they're probably way off in their sizing. Like, going back, I, I like this because it fits me. Yeah. I mean, you know, there's so much copying in the mountain bike industry, isn't it? How long is it for people before manufacturers cotton on to, to this and say, oh yeah, why aren't we doing this? Uh, I don't think they will because it's because they haven't got the balls. Um, essentially, most of the mountain bike manufacturers seem to be like, let's say, the fashion industry. Um, going to any shop, all the stuff looks the same. Even with the mountain bike wear, you know, all the stuff looks the same, you know. Yeah. If Royal come out with a red, sh a red short that's got the stretchy fabric, next year Fox have got a red short with a stretchy fabric. Next year everyone's got a stretchy short with the red fabric, you know. Okay, look, let's move on from 29, 26. Where are you at with 650? I mean, surely 650 will it make this bike that little bit better again, won't it? Has to. I, it'd be nice to try, but it won't fit in. And uh, I. I'm a I'm a big fat hairy biker and I do tend to lean quite hard on the front tire so I like to have my axle clamped from both sides of the wheel and at the moment we don't have a 650B fork that does that we've only got the 34 with a 15mm QR which for most people is really good you really think you, you say you're a 36 man through and through staunch Absolutely, I, I love the 36. I think it's um, it's a really great compromise between weight and strength, and I love the fact that it's actually um, clamped at both sides of the axle. Um, similar thing with the with the Maxil 12 uh, mil bolt through rear ends. There are hardly any of them now on a trail bike where you can actually have a clamped axle on both sides. So you always get some kind of flex both sides. Yeah, sorry, here comes the postman. Come on, chief. Sorry, Chief. What do you think of uh, think of the two bikes? Well, look, that one looks a lot nicer than that one. Which that one needs, That one. Oh. That one needs a clean. <laughs> it just looks a bit flasher, to be honest. From from just. Chris, tell me, we can talk about tyres and wheels. If it's not got nice colours, people aren't going to buy them, are they? Yes, that's that's perfect. Right. Thank, thank you very much. Cheers. 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 Yeah, that's kind of that's, that's that's it, isn't it? I mean, 
I mean, people, you know, people are going to be watching this thinking, what are they on about? 51, 49? It's like, I guess you... Most, pe- I, most people buy a bike because Stevie Smith rides it or because yeah. Sam Hill rides it or Steve Pete rides it. They don't buy, necessarily buy the bike that suits them better. But to be honest, there's not much choice in what suits them better because everyone's building bikes that are very similar in very similar postcodes in Taiwan. So... So what, what are you going to do about it? Ugh. Just keep on, keep on riding this because it's the most interesting so far for me. It's funny actually because um, it's a ride with Chris 15 years ago, isn't it? And we used to have Mr. Dirt stems, which yes. were 30, I think they were thir- mile 38 mile reach 15 years ago, and it's like yeah. used to hammer onto me that that's what I should be wear- using, and here we are. And five mil stem on Steve's bike, 15 years later in the same postcode. And it's still the shortest stem you can buy. Yeah. We still can't buy shorter to see if it works. Yeah. Can we have some uh, 20 mils and 15s, please, I think? Yeah, absolutely. Love to have some. Have we covered everything? What's, those el- what's that elastic doing on your bike there? Should we avoid that one? Yeah. <laughs> uh, have we covered everything? Yeah. Yeah? As usual, we've waffled on too long. Yeah. So <laughs> that's Anyway, that's the kind of harping on... Rambling, we do. I, th- I think the thing that we that Steve said earlier on is we both ended up in a very similar place via very different routes. Yeah. You found what you need, which is a roomier cockpit, by going to the 29er, and you got the grip by loading it via a longer chainstay and a lower bottom bracket, so you're not loading the front end as much. So you so you've got the same, and we. I mean that is probably a fault of mine in the past. I've said that. 29 is has got more stability than a lot of 26 bikes of the ones that are available. Yes. Now, I sh- what I, I'm really sorry, what I should have said is that I should have brought this bike into the equation, which is actually, you know, it's got it's long, it's kind of stable. It didn't exist when you first started harping on about the 29ers. Um, so you got you, you got your stability. You, a quieter contact patch because it's a bigger wheel uh, the stability through the lower bottom bracket below the center the the, the pivot of the axles and here comes another, oh we've got TNT man come on in TNT can you just ask Jason Jason um, we've got two bikes here which is your choice Moonrigger Moonrigger there you go <laughs> balances it up <laughs> thank you so yeah where were we uh, I, t- I was saying, so you've got, your st- you've got the stability that you need to ride on your mud tracks, mm-hmm. uh, and, and you can, and you could, yeah, but you can load the front tyre via that lower bottom bracket, and you've got a quieter contact patch, even though the head angle is steep. You, so you've got what you need from your bike there. I've gone about getting the same thing, but I've got the quieter steering through having a slacker head angle. That's been slackened off again. Your forks work better. Uh, the forks work better as well. I've had to make a nice lightweight setup for the wheels so that it'll track the ground nicely. The handle, the stem is quite short, so the contact patch to hand position is is good. So you're not you're not folding the front tire every time you hit a bump. The stability of the bike is great because it's long, and I'm getting over the bumps almost as fast because the relationship between the bottom brackets and the contact patch between the bump and the wheel is almost as good on this front center as as it would be on a t- short front center with a 29er wheel so we both in effect come to the same conclusion via different routes so there i guess I, I, see, I think we need to go and ride the two bikes together, really. And just kind of, but listen, just kind of good to know what your uh, what your viewpoints are on all this. Um, yeah, this is just fire away, really. Thank you very much. Sorry. Let's go and ride the Monduro trails then. Yeah. Later on the week. Spot on. Right. <laughs>